friends and family, we thank you all for joining us in our live stream today. I pray that wherever you are, you are ready to worship, ready to lift your voice and bless our God. We serve a holy God. We serve a faithful God. We serve a mighty God that can do everything that we can even ask or think of. God, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you, God, that whatever we face throughout this week, God, you have all, we've already won. It's already been defeated. We thank you that you are with us forever and always. We thank, we thank you for your love, God. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, God. And we pray right now that you pour out your love on us, pour out your spirit on us, pour out your anointing on us, God. We thank you for peace right now, God, the peace that surpasses all understanding, God. We thank you, God. We honor you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your voice and bless our God. Hallelujah. God, you are worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You guys know this song wherever you are. Stand up on your feet, whether in your kitchen, your living room, even if you're in your car, don't stand up, but just bless our God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, God, we bless you. We want
nothing greater than being in your presence, Lord. There's nothing greater than experiencing your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. There's no sweeter scent than the scent of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Holy Spirit, we want to see you. Yeah. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. Tasted and seen of the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free and my soul is under. Oh God, oh God, your presence, Lord. Oh, sing holy.
We thank God. We give him all the praise and the glory this morning. Uh, before we get into the word, there, there is an announcement uh, that we want to present to you uh, at this time. Uh, we have a young lady in our congregation that is trying to push and invest and minister into the women of our church. And we want to present her to you at this time and let her share uh, what God has laid on our heart. Uh, for our women's ministry this year, none other than Amber Brown. I want to run over. Praise God, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise God. We thank God for his precious spirit in this place today. There is such a sweet spirit in this place today, and I just want to thank God for his precious Holy Spirit being in this place today. Amen. I stand before you humbly um, as the new director of the women's ministry today. All the women of Mount Hebron make some noise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am so honored. I am so grateful. Uh, I just want to thank God for my pastor and my first lady um, for allowing me this opportunity to uh, minister to my sisters in Christ. Um, I want to thank Dr. Yvonne. I want to thank um, my husband who's been helping me through this. Um, he has been a support. Uh, he's been helping me. Things. Um, I am not a techie. If you know me, you know I am not a techie. So I thank God for him. Um, I just want to give you a little bit of information today, um, just some of the things God has been giving me over these past, really, several months, but um, specifically these past several weeks, just some things God has given me um, that I want to share with you pertaining to the women. We are the bride of Christ, amen? We are the bride of Christ. Therefore, 
we have to govern ourselves in a way and in a matter that is getting us prepared and ready to meet him, right? So ladies, it's time to do the work, amen? It's time to get our whole selves in order that we can be that beautiful bride without spot or wrinkle. And in order to do that, we must first and foremost be holy. So the primary scripture um, for the year um, is in First Thessalonians 5 and 23, and it says, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This year, we are focusing on the whole woman. Amen? The whole woman. Bodies. Mentally. Physically. body, Spiritually. We are focusing on the whole woman. Women, we are going to do some work. Just because we are virtual, just because we're not able to come together in an intimate way in person does not mean that we will not be doing this thing together. Amen? We are going to start by sanctifying ourselves. I want this to really be a time before we jump into anything else. We can't be whole until we are sanctified. Amen? And when we talk about the whole woman, we are not just talking about the woman as you see or the woman that you, that, that, the things that comprise you of, but we are talking about the whole woman, you being complete in Christ, you lacking nothing in Christ, amen? So we have to, in order to get to that place, we have to sanctify ourselves. When we, we know when we first accepted Christ that we immediately were sanctified. Um, our positions in him were sanctified. He called us out. He set us apart, amen? So we know that we immediately became sanctified positionally, but we also are doing a work progressively to be sanctified, amen? And this is a daily work. This is a constant renewing of our mind. So once we are living in a way that pleases God, our lives are, gov are governed by a godly standard. And when this happens, we begin to see a complete transformation. We begin to see that we honor God, amen? I'm sorry, I just lost my place. So therefore, mentally, physically, and spiritually, we are blameless before God. We are spiritually whole and mature. So as we make conscious decisions to submit to God and allow him to sanctify us completely, our lives will be overall more functional. We will begin to see wholeness in various areas of our lives. And I'll just read a couple that we'll be focusing on mentally. When we think of our mental, when we think of our soul, that's, that's the seat of our emotions, that's our desires, that's our appetites, okay? So what kinds of things are you feeling right now? What are you feeling? Do you find yourselves on an emotional roller coasters? Do you find yourselves, um, do you find your desire uh, dwindling for the things of God? Do you find your appetite just not there anymore? Amen? Do you find yourself more stressed than normal? When we, when we begin to see this transformation, we begin to see a complete transformation in our in in our the seat of our soul we will be less fearful we will be less stressed we will have healthy coping habits and our passions and desires will honor god this is where this is the goal this is a journey and man we're getting here and we're all going to do it together spiritually our identity as a woman is reframed through what the word of god says there's a lot of things that we frame our womanhood by you know, some of us, it's, it's the fact that we're a mom or the fact that we're married or the fact that we're not married or the fact that we have, you know, certain positions that we work, certain titles and certain accolades, but none of that matters, amen? And if we're not careful, we begin to lose who we are and it gets buried under the superficial things that the world tries to label us as. So we are doing some, some, some breaking of some of these things that, has, that we have allowed to shape us. And I'm not saying that all those things are bad. I'm just saying that we have to get down to the original design. We are who God says we are first and foremost. Our identity is through him, amen? And that is the foundation of us. That is who we are. So when we see this happen, we are more effective as wives and as singles and as mothers and women, according to the scripture, 
You know, we will be more effective at dismantling the strongholds in our lives, the negative thinking, the insecurities, the unforgiveness, the fear, the pride, the lust. All those things we're going to be tackling this year, amen? And then physically, as a body, as our physical bodies, we submit to Christ. We submit our sexuality to God, amen? Married or single, we submit our sexuality to God. We take care of our health. We eat right, amen? We get the checkups that we need. We take steps to eliminate certain behaviors and, and, and patterns that are not healthy for us. And we will get more in depth about that. So ladies, my vision is that we as a community, that we become holy and whole. Amen. That is the, the theme for this year, that we become holy and whole. Amen. That we honor God in our relationships and that we be accountable to one another. We are our sister's keeper. So I want to see that intimacy. I want to see that close, that closeness with one another. I want to see that, that, um, that sense of unity with one another. Amen? And then I believe that we will ultimately begin to change the world around us. We begin to change the environments around us. It starts with us. It starts each one individually. It starts with us. Amen? So those are just some of the things I ask that you pray with me. Um, I am here. If you want to call me, you will be seeing a newsletter every month. Um, it will be posted on the Mount Hebron page. Um, and then in that newsletter, you will see a little, some motivational thoughts for the month. You'll also see um, some different events and some things that will be taking place that month. And you'll also see birthdays. Um, we want to shout out our sisters um, who have birthdays for that month. So I ask you to be watchful. Um, I ask you to be vigilant. I ask you to be engaged. Amen. Because this is not one thing that a few of us can do, but this is, we are a community and I want us to function like that, amen? I want us to grow together. I want us to walk together. I want us to develop together. So I encourage you to please get involved. Um, some of your sisters that you don't see here, um, if you would let them know. And um, every, all the information that you need, my contact information will be on the newsletter as well. Um, look forward to game nights. Look forward to different things that we'll be doing together. And if you have any suggestions, you can let me know, amen? I love you all, ladies. I am excited, to, looking forward to working with you all. I pray that you pray for me, and I will be praying for you. Ready. So if you want to grow and be discipled, that's, and you a lady... <laughs> I encourage you to connect with her as, as we want to see our women love God, learn together, and live it out. That's basically what she said. <laughs> Amen. That's basically what she said. So we thank, we thank God. I'm so glad to have a few faces in the house with me this morning. God bless you. Good to see everyone. Everyone on the live, God, God bless you. I just got to take a moment. Man, we've had a really good Sunday with our son. I want to shout out to Nisha down this morning for those of you that are on the live with us every Sunday y'all know we be struggling <laughs> we be st it is it is not our fault it's the certain things that we've had to over obstacles we've had to overcome and we have grown and learned and usually the person on the sound get yelled at they'll never get acknowledged so I just wanted to tell her thank you thank you Tanisha for for not giving up because I know it was frustrating it was it was yes Lord it was frustrating First, I thank, I thank God. I thank God for her. We are in a series called Reset, and we are in our second sermon. Uh, and if you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, uh, you can open them to Hebrews, the third chapter, and the seventh and the eighth verse. But we're really going to deal with the book of Jonah. But just from my main scripture, I want to read Hebrews, the third chapter. The seventh and the eighth verse. And it reads, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, Today, today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. 
Uh, this morning, I want to speak from a subject, answer the call. There's a simple song that says, I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. Lord, I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart I'll agree and my answer will be yes Lord yes y'all remember that song when we lifted one time I'll say yes Lord yes to your will and to your way I'll say yes Lord yes I will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart I'll agree and my answer will be yes Lord yes hallelujah yeah that's the oldie but goodie right there I wonder if anybody said yes this morning. Yes to his will, yes to his way. Oh, yes. I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Hallelujah. Answer the call. Right, we want to talk about answering the call. To not answer the call is to live life outside of God's will. And to live life outside of God's will uh, comes with consequences. Mm. Because, because of the fact that in the call, in the call, there is something that's priceless that you can't find anywhere else on this earth. And what's priceless is the meaning for existence. I'll say it again. In the call, is something that's priceless that you can't find anywhere else. And it's the meaning for existence. Nothing else can give your life more meaning than the one who created you. I understand that there are things that you may be passionate about, but make sure you know what your call is. I know there may be someone listening this morning and say, Pastor, well, I don't know my call. That's okay. Because we don't always know exactly what it is that God wants us to do. It's something that crystallizes over time. It, it, it becomes clearer as we go. For some we knew when we were three years old. <laughs> we had an idea. It was evident. It was undeniable. But when you don't answer the call, there's emptiness. Life seems pointless. Doesn't add up. Like, like I can't, I, I couldn't, hmm. I don't think I could ever really be, Dr. Yvonne, a secular artist. Because I couldn't sing with the same meaning that I sing gospel music with. 
Because when I sing gospel music, when I sing unto the Lord, I'm, I know that I'm giving my gift back to him. That's me. Now, every, now I'm, I'm not trying to put nobody in the box wherever you feel you need to be. That's, that's between you and God. But between me and God, I, 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 I couldn't be a secular artist. Now, I could be an inspirational one, but, but secular, uh, I can't do it because it, that doesn't mean as much as singing unto the glory of God to me. And so when I, what did that mean? Ah, ooh, it, it, it means something. I'm singing from somewhere, right? Like that, on the inside. Now, now if, I, if I ignored God's call to use my gift for his glory, and I go out and say, baby, 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 this don't work for me. Now, I like to listen to that when me and my wife are together, but that don't work for me because I answered the call. Y'all understand? I hope I ain't. Y'all all right that I said, baby? I answered the call. And that, that, that means more to me. When you don't answer the call, you have lack of direction. You, you can possibly just live in frustration. You can even become depressed because you can't find purpose. Amen? So it's important that if you, if you don't know the call, that you seek God for the call. In Jonah, the first chapter, I told you we're going to be in the book of Jonah. I'm going to jump back between Jonah and Hebrews. But it says here, now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for the wickedness is come up before me. Here we have the call. The call. The call. The call involves, it always involves, God summoning a people or an individual to fulfill a purpose he has already orchestrated. Am I making sense, Shante? Is this bothering you? Because I know you're trying to look at me. I'm trying to look at you. I want you to get all of this word today. Amen. I don't want you to, I don't want this to be in the way. Sorry, Lafayette. Yeah. We was looking. We were talking to each other. Amen. I got somebody to talk to. Uh, uh, the, the, the divine call involves God summoning uh, a, a nation or a group of people or individuals to fulfill a purpose that he has already orchestrated. It started in Genesis when we deal with Abraham. He calls Abraham. Once again, God summons him. God always initiates it. God summons him, tells him, hey, I need to use you. You got to get out of that land. You got to get out of that place. I need to use you because I'm, I'm about to birth a nation through you. And he keeps on calling. He calls the people of Israel. And he says, listen, I'm going to be your God and you're going to be my people. And now it is even realized in the church through the gospel that he's calling us, summoning us sinners to convert and accept Jesus Christ as their personal savior. Now, but there's something that I want to clear up because when we talk about a calling, we always think about somebody in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. We always think about somebody holding a mic and leading a group of people, which that's not the only call. I want you to understand something that, that even if you don't know what your the calling is, or you don't know the office or whatever that you uh, that, that God has purpose. There's still a calling that you have to answer today, right here in this service, right here on this live feed. Yeah, because see, a lot of people put off for what they can do for God tomorrow because they say, I don't know what to do to t today because they're boxing a call into an office or a pulpit. Let me, let me break it down just a little bit more. Y'all still with me? Let me break it down just, just a little bit more. So, some of us, some of us accepted the calling of repentance. Mark, the second chapter in the 17th verse, when Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, they that are whole have no need of the physician, one of my favorite scriptures, but they that are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Summoning. 
Yep, yep. Some of us were called to salvation. That's why you're here. That's why you're on this live feed. He says, there is one body, one spirit, even as ye are called, and one hope of your calling. Acts the second, uh, I'm sorry, Ephesians 4 and 4. And then he also calls us to service. Meaning there's something you can do without being in an office, without being a preacher, without, without having an ordination service, that there is work for you to do. Listen, he's, he, he, he has something for you to do today. Why? Because God never created anything and not given it a purpose. Never, never. Everything that God has ever created has a purpose. And that's why I read Hebrews, the third chapter, the seventh and the eighth verse says, Wherefore, as the Holy Spirit saith today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Every day. Notice that that text is in the present tense. Today. I'm, I'm glad that the text said that because the Holy Spirit, just as he called Jonah, just as he called Abraham, just as he called Esther, just as he called Gideon, he is calling you and he's still speaking. Somebody just say it for me. Today, today, there's something you got to do today. And guess what? As, the, as I'm speaking, thank you, Holy Spirit. Some of y'all know what it is already. Because you know you said you was going to do it yesterday and you didn't do it. That's why you got to stop putting off of tomorrow what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do today. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, whatever. The Holy Spirit. Not, not, listen, I'm not a prophet, so I can't go and tell y'all what y'all need to do. But we can sit down and talk about it and figure it out if you would like. We can, we, can, we can get together and have a conversation and pray about it. And I'm willing to, to sit there with you and say, hey, maybe the Lord is saying. We're not going to always get it right, but one thing is wrong, doing nothing. Come on, somebody. You, you may not know what to do, but if you ain't doing nothing, you know you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing. Something is supposed to be done when? Today, you got to answer the call. You got to answer the call. Today. If it ain't nothing but more prayer time, if it ain't nothing but reading your word, if it ain't nothing but going on Facebook and reaching, hey, do you need a prayer? If it ain't nothing but putting up a scripture, do what the Holy Ghost told you to do and do it today. Don't think about it. There needs to be an immediateness. Thank you, Holy Ghost. There needs to be an immediateness. With You don't sit there and, and, and analyze it because if you analyze it, let me calm down, you're going to talk yourself out of it. If you analyze it, you're going to look at that thing and you're going to see your inability to do it by yourself. And you're going to say, I can't do this. God, I never told you to do it without me in the first place. Anything I called you to do, you need me to do it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you, you got to do it. You got to do it today. When, when Mary broke that alabaster box over the Savior, it was expensive. If she'd have sat there and thought about how much it cost it, she probably never would have did it. And she'd have sat there and been like, you know what I can do? I can get my toes done. I can get my nail. I can get me a new, a new garment. I can get me a new uh, sash robe. I can get me a new shawl. I can get some, some, some more wheat and some rice and grain for the rest of the year. Nah, Jesus, you know what? Here you go. There you go, Lord. <laughs> yeah, hallelujah. I love you. <laughs> a little sprinkle. Just flick it on them. No, 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 no. She, she, she had a today in her spirit. He going to get all of me today. <laughs> Yeah. Gee. Ah. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is speaking. The Holy Spirit is speaking. He's speaking right now. Uh -huh. hey, listen, and, 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 and I can go on the flip side of that. That if the Holy Spirit is convicting you of a service that you need to be doing, if he's giving you marching orders, he's also giving you repentance orders too. Because just as well as there's something you should start today, there's probably something you should stop. Today. The, 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 the woman of God said in order for us to be whole, we got to be sanctified. Yeah, so there's some stuff you need to repent. Today. That's why the Bible says in, 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 in 2 Timothy 4 and 2, it says, preach the word. 
be instant in season and out of season. What, 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 what was Paul telling Timothy? He was giving him a today ministry. He said, I don't care where you find yourself. Always look for an opportunity to share the gospel. I don't care the inconvenience. I don't, it doesn't matter the challenge. You find a way to be ready every day. Every day. There's another scripture I want y'all to look at. This, this one, this, this blessed me. I think it's going to bless you. It's in Ecclesiastes. It's, it's dealing with the, the wisdom books. And he says here, Ecclesiastes 11 and 4. I hope y'all listening to me on the live feed. He that observeth the wind shall not sow. And he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. I know y'all like, Pastor, what did you just say? I know. Let me, let me rewind and bring it back and give it to you in the NLT. He says, farmers who wait for perfect weather, hmm, never plant. If they watch every cloud, they never harvest. What are he saying? Some of y'all got so many excuses of why you ain't did your today. If you keep looking for a perfect situation to answer your call, you're never going to find one because there isn't one. <laughs> you waiting for this to happen. You waiting for that to happen. No, use what you got. Don't forget about what you don't have. And the fact that if it was God that summoned you, who laid it on your heart, that's all you need. I don't care if the weather is cloudy. I don't care if the weather is sunny. I don't care if it's thundering and lightning. I don't care if it's a drought. You know why? Even in this metaphor, God can bring about a harvest in a drought. You ain't got to wait for the weather. If God tells you to plant in a dry season, he'll bring out a harvest. Somebody shout back to me today. Do it now. Say yes, Lord, right now. But you ain't known. You already got everything that you need on the inside of you. If you needed more stuff to answer the call, he wouldn't have laid it on your heart. But if God has touched your heart, you surrendered. Yeah. Yeah. The word of the Lord came unto Jonah. It was a call. And he had to answer. That day, the Lord summoned Jonah. Summoned Jonah, he called them. Y'all know Jonah, he makes some mistakes. Thank God that our, our status doesn't determine if God's going to call us or not. He knew, he knew, he knew Jonah was going to do what he did, but he still got the call. Just before I go any further, I know, I know you done made some mistakes. I know you done been outside of his will. I know you done ignored the call. But I want you to know if you pick up the phone, he's still on the other line waiting for you to answer. Mm -hmm. he's, still on, he's still on the other line waiting for you to answer. He tells, now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, cry against it. For its wickedness has come up before me. Ah, Nineveh, Nineveh. Uh, Nineveh. N -n 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 mm, Nineveh. Nineveh had actually slaughtered some of the Israelites. Yeah, they, they, was, they, did, they did the people of God dirty. So when you think about why Jonah wanted to go, you could kind of see where he was coming from. Jonah didn't want to go because he didn't want to see them saved. <laughs> he wanted to see them dead. He said, y'all done hurt my people. And he knew if I go and tell them what God told me to tell them, some of them going to get saved, and I don't want that to happen. And so in verse, verse 3, it says, but Jonah rose up to flee. Uh-huh. Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. With every call, 
that God summons you, there's always more than likely going to be resistance. Yeah. There's going to be resistance. One of the main reasons why there's going to be resistance because usually God's summoning is not on our agenda. It's not on our vision board. <laughs> it's not a part of our itinerary. It's, it's something that catches us off guard. God, no, no, not them. See, you can surrender to God and you can choose what God you want to serve. Let me back up. You can choose. If you want to serve Buddha, you can serve Buddha. You have that choice. It's free will. If you want to serve this guy and that guy, you can serve him. But once you surrender to God, you cannot choose who he tells you to go and serve. Once you surrender to God, you are a servant. <laughs> You're not a partner in a sense where you got rank to make decisions about marching orders you receive marching orders a a am i making sense and so so one of the first places resistance start is in our hearts because we haven't bought in sometimes to what god told us to do i, I haven't accepted this yet and so so there is resistance there's resistance in jonah there's resistance in Jonah. Uh, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't want to because these people have hurt the Israelites. Uh, uh, but, but, but he also uh, knows that there's resistance because when we accept the call, the people we got to go and minister to don't even want to hear what we want to say. We don't want to say it, and they don't want to hear it. <laughs> so when somebody does what God tells them to do and the people receive it, it's a miracle in itself. Anybody hear me? We don't want to do it. They don't want to hear it. And Satan don't want to see it happen. We got resistance on every angle. Uh, uh, he's, he's, he's resisting. And what, what does he do? My second point. Because there's resistance. And usually when there's resistance, we start running. Now, we can't run physically. I mean, you can. But... Probably today is more of a mental run where you neglect what God has told you to do. And you, you harden your heart. That's why the word says, harden not your heart. Meaning that you become uh, uh, insubordinate. You become uh, uh, indifferent to what God has told you to do. And I'm telling you, that's a dangerous thing. Because if you become acquainted with hardening your heart, you'll start to create a distance between you and God, that when you're ready to get back to God, he's going to seem so far from you. Because you done hardened your heart so much. You done said no so many times that you have lost your way in your relationship with him. I hope I'm making sense. He, he, here, here he starts running, and the Bible says he paid a fare. He paid a fare to go down to Tarshish. Hey, he, he paid a he paid money so that he could get out of the will of God. He could he he could determine what fare he was gonna pay, but you never can determine the cost of disobedience. The cost of disobedience will always be more than what you think it'll be. The cost of running will hurt you more than you could ever realize. Duh. He, he starts running, and, and he gets in his boat, and when you are running from God, it's easy to find companionship. It's easy to find bad company. <laughs> when you trying to, am I right, first lady? When you trying to do the will of God, don't nobody want to do it with you. Ah, you know, I was, I was going to join you for that prayer, but I was up late, and I just couldn't make it. Ah, I was, I was going to do that. I was going to. I was coming. I promise. I was, I was going to buy the book and read with y'all. But I got started in this new job. I just can't do it. Oh, but man, if you say, hey, let's turn up. Everybody show up early when they bring your own beer. Bring your own boo. <laughs> we, we got edibles. We got food. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a festival. <laughs> I'm just telling the truth. It wasn't hard for him to find somebody that that help him keep running, amen. But how many of you know? Like I said, that it'll cost more. He he gets he gets in this boat, and in verse four it says, "But the Lord sent a great wind into the sea, 
And there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was likened to be broken. You, there's no way you can run from God. There's no way. It's impossible. You, you can't run from your call. Now, you could choose not to answer it, but it's always going to be there. It's always going to be there. You know, huh? You know what you need to do. He's trying to run. Uh, the, 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 the people, the mariners are crying. The, 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 the ship looked like it's about to be broke. Uh, so verse 6 says in Jonah 1, So the shipmaster came to him, said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Woo! He was distant from God. This Negro had the nerve, Dr. Yvonne, to disobey God, knew it was God, and went to sleep. How you find sleep in disobedience? <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was done. He's like, God, I'm done with you. Yeah, it was too comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. And they said, everyone to his fellow, come, let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast their lots. Oh, yeah, and the lot fell on Jonah. Mm -hmm. He's running, but now his cover has been blown. Mm -mm, yep. Somebody going to see. Mm -mm. You running. <laughs> mm-hmm. And God uses some pagan sailors to expose the child of God. So be careful of who you ignore because it might be God speaking through. Okay. And they said unto him, tell us, look, 8 and 9, this blessed me. This blessed me, y'all. Uh, they said unto him, tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us. What is thine occupation? <laughs> and whence comest thou? What is thy country? And what people are thou? He said unto them, I am an Hebrew. And I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which have made the, the sea and the dry land. That text blessed me. Why? Because even in the midst of Jonah's disobedience, there was still reverence. Which shows that Jonah wasn't totally lost. He just needed to be reset. Jonah was having, Dr. Yvonne, he, Minister Bradley, he was having a malfunction. Now, now, now listen now, we deal with stuff that malfunctions all the time. What do we do? Turn it off? Turn it on. Why? Because the malfunction is not fatal. There's still value. <laughs> There's still value in the thing that's malfunctioning. See, if I got a Benz, and they tell me that the transmission is blown, uh, that's a Benz, though. That's a Benz. I don't care what year. You're looking at least between three to five grand, maybe more, to put in a new transmission. But an average cost of a Benz, I mean, the the... the New off the lot. They said the average cost of a Benz is about 50 grand. Basic. 40 to 50 grand. Now you might find one at, at Cousin Moe's lot around the corner for, for 20,000 and not too many miles. God bless. But I'm talking about off the lot. Why would I throw away a $50,000 car for a $3,000 malfunction? Uh, what, what am I saying? Don't define yourself by your malfunction. You still got to know your worth that even though you being disobedient, there's still value in your life. There's still purpose in your existence. You got to get back and say, I am a Christian. I am a child of God. I got purpose. Greater is he. That is in me, that he, that is in the world. You just having a malfunction. Turn you off, turn it back on. Turn it off, turn it back on. Reset, reset, get back. Jonah, Jonah was just, he, he resisted, he was running, he was just having a malfunction, his wires were crossed. 
his wife. To write Jonah off right now would have been a greater waste than his disobedience because there was still more value in him than what he was doing. He knew who he was. He was just having a malfunction. He, he was just, can I call it like it is? Maybe he was just being human. He was struggling. He was struggling with his, with his humanity, his limited knowledge. He was struggling with his flesh. He was struggling with his anger. You felt like that sometimes. You was, he was struggling with his heart. He couldn't come to grips what God was telling him to do. He was having a human moment. And your human moments don't cancel your divine assignments. Hallelujah. He had a moment. Whoa, Jesus. He had a moment. He had a moment. Oh, Jesus. My God. Oh, Jesus. Just take a moment and thank him for grace. Out of all the malfunctions you done had, you don't even feel worthy. But God still calls you son. Still calls you daughter. You feel like scum. He still calls you his. Thank him for grace. Thank him for mercy. Thank him for another chance. Thank him for another breath. Thank him for another opportunity to answer the call. Another chance. To say, Lord, what would you have me to do? Here I am. My storage is empty. And I am available. <laughs> Reset. Reset. Let me get to the end of this message. I got to get to the end of this message. <laughs> he, they, he tell them, look, y'all, it's my fault. It's me. They're like, well, what do you propose we do, Jonah? Jonah mans up. Mans up. At least you got to get that man credit. This sea was so bad that it looked like it could break the boat. Jonah says, toss me over. You, that, that, that shows that, that somewhere in his heart, his heart was still soft. Somewhere was still soft. Somewhere there was a silent, very silent yes, Lord. It was still there. He says, it's, it's me. It's, it's my fault. That's why you got to be careful. Y'all bear with me. You got to be careful about being disobedient. Because the other people connected to you could get in some mess because of you. You got to think about your wife and your husband. Think about your children when you decide to tiptoe on God. Be careful. Yeah. Yeah, sure. He said, hey, y'all, it's my fault. I'm going to own up to it. Y'all tossed me out. They, I guess they had something in their heart. They said, nah, come on, man, we're going to try to. They tried to row it to the land. They couldn't get there. They were rowing. No, man, okay. We got you, Jonah, but I think I can see. I think I can see Tarshish from here. They was never going to get to Tarshish because God didn't tell them to go there. But they rowing. They got good intentions. Y'all bear with me this morning. They got good intentions. But people with good intentions can row you from your destiny. He has to go over to get to his destiny. Sometimes God provides a way for you to get back to your call. But it's scary. Sometimes God provides a way. It looks like he's writing you off, but he's actually isolating you. <laughs> yeah, he threw him over. God caused a fish to swallow him. He's isolated. He's in a place now where he can't turn to nobody but God. There's nobody else he can talk to. It's dark. It's uncomfortable. God got him right where he wanted him. It looked like it was over. It, you would think the acids of the fish's stomach would cause his skin to deteriorate. But when God's in charge of the storm, when God's in charge of the fish, he can put you in a place that looks like it's over. But he's actually about to reset. 
it looks like it's over, but he's actually turning you off and turning you on. He's by himself. And as he is in this fish, Tarshish is being detoxed from his spirit. As he is in this fish, Tarshish is oozing out of his spirit and he don't want Tarshish no more. It's in the fish that you'll come back to your senses and realize I got to get to Nineveh. I got to answer the call. God, here I am. Here I am. I don't want to go there. Whatever you have me to go, whatever you have me to do, my answer will be yes. I'll go to Nineveh. I'll preach to the people. I'll do it. My answer is yes. Whatever you desire, I'll answer the call. Yes, God. I'm available to your will. Yes, God. I'm your servant. Yes, God. Whatever you desire. Yeah. you desire me my answer will be yeah yeah detox them excuses out of my spirit remove my insecurities remove my low self-esteem my answer will be yes yes to your will yes to your way holy spirit speak holy spirit speak Around, around the ninth or the tenth verse, Jonah says, Jonah says, God, I vow, I vow to do what you tell me to do. I vow to go where you tell me to go, for salvation is yours. He takes the situation out of his hands. He puts it in God's divine, and he says, it belongs to you. I Meaning, however you, whoever you want to say, whatever you want to do. As I close, I close with grace. I close with, with, with deliverance. I close with submission. Because verse 3, chapter 3, chapter 3, chapter 3, verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. Come on, Keone. Second time. Thank God for another chance. And if there's anybody on this live feed or in here this morning, if your heart is ready for a second time, I believe he'll speak today. Thank God for grace. God say it again. My heart's in a better place. God say it again. Tarshish is, I hate Tarshish. I want Nineveh. Say it again. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. Say it again. I won't disappoint you this time, Daddy. Say it again. Second time. Second time. Second time. Tell them the same thing. Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it, that preaching that I bid thee. And verse 3 says, and Jonah arose and went to Nineveh. If you have breath in your lungs this morning, and if you have a heart that desires to honor God and answer the call, get up and go to Nineveh. Get up and go to Nineveh. Today. Do what he told you to do today. Harden not your hearts. Hallelujah. Second time. Second time. Which shows 
This shows a reflection, Minister Bradley, of God's heart. He really doesn't want to write you off. He don't want to, he don't want to end your ministry. He don't want to stop you. He just wants you to come to your senses. He could have ended Jonah. He, he could have, Jonah, he didn't have to provide a fish to swallow him. And even with the fish, the fish could have caught, caught him between the teeth and shredded him up. But every time God was trying to, he was trying, I hear you, Holy Ghost. He was trying to get through. But there was, there was no dial tone. He was trying to make a connection with Jonah. And the only way he could make a connection is through great adversity. Look at somebody. Tell him, answer the call. Revelation says, he that hath an ear, let, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Huh? It didn't say the bishop. It didn't say the pastor. It didn't say the evangelist. It didn't say the he, 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 whoever you are, that God the Spirit, if you have a discernment, let you, let you hear. So God, I thank you as I close. God, I thank you for grace. I thank you for mercy. I thank you for the bellies that we've been in that gave us a chance to wake us up. And in those moments, we thought you hated us, and now we can look back and see that you loved us. You were trying to preserve us. We were just malfunctioning. You was trying to reset. And so, Lord, in the name of Jesus, if there's anybody that doesn't know, know you as their personal Savior on this live feed or here in this sanctuary, I pray that they would accept the call of salvation today. I, I pray that they would open their hearts to your voice, to the convictions, that they would respond to your will in the name of Jesus. And Lord, for those that are saved but just need to be reset, may we answer the call of repentance. And then answer the call of service. That whatever you have bound us to do, that we will start today. That we will not put off for tomorrow what you have confirmed in our spirits today. Ooh, God, I thank you. I thank you for revival. I thank you, God, for resuscitation. I thank you, God, for alignment. I thank you, God, for reestablishing us, for being patient and long-suffering towards us that you still did not change your mind about us you didn't change the purpose in spite of our malfunctions in spite of our backsliding in spite of our murmuring and our complaining oh god you said nope i still call you unplug our ears take the wax out that we may hear your voice clearer today than we did yesterday. Fathers, in the name of Jesus, we pray. And my brothers and sisters say amen. Yeah. So the Lord has spoken today. The Holy Spirit has spoken today. And we thank him for it. We're gracious and we're better, be we're better because of it. And I pray that you have been edified. And as always, if you feel led to sow a seed, you can do so via Cash App. That's dollar sign MT Hebron 216. Or you could also look, click on the push pay link in the comments. Thank you for seeing us as good soil. Thank you for investing in the vision that God has here as we strive to answer our call <laughs> as a church to disciple, to love, to embrace, to preach, to be consistent in our callings. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. We love you, and I encourage you to answer the call today. As I leave you with this thought, I've never known anyone to give God their all and regret it. I've never known anyone to give God their all and regret it. Harden not your hearts. Answer the call today. We love you. Have a wonderful day. God bless.